Okay, so to access the, um, the quick reference guide that we're going to walk through today, you'll go to doas.ga.gov. So from the DOAS website homepage, you'll scroll over to the link for Team Georgia Marketplace. Click on Team Georgia Marketplace. And underneath that, you'll click on the Learn More link. From that page, it says, what is the Team Georgia Marketplace? You'll come down underneath Information, Resources, and How To and click on the State and Local Entities. So from this page, you'll see your, all of your, trans, your training materials as well as the quick reference guides. So if you click on the PDF link, that will open up the list of all of the Team Georgia Marketplace um, quick reference guides that we've created. And you'll notice that they're in sections, and all of the P-card guides are under the P-card section. So it's a good idea to, to, uh, to make this page a favorite. We often make updates to these as well as uh, post new quick reference guides when we get a question, similar questions about the same process. So the, the two that we're going to go through today are the, um, the reconcile P-card transactions. And also we're going to go through how to link a, uh, a PO line to a P-card transaction. As well as we'll go through the approved P-card transaction. But if you're an approver on a card, um, you probably don't need a, uh, a full quick reference guide for that since it's just merely changing the status. So the first we're going to go through is the reconcile P-card transaction. So the first thing I'm going to do is just log into the environment and hopefully you've all uh, received your, um, your user IDs and passwords um, into um, into Team Georgia Marketplace or into the, the, the PeopleSoft system. So I'm going to log in uh, as a, uh, into the test environment as a, as a reconciler, as a card holder. So one of the first things that I want to do if I'm a PCARD reconciler is to add the PCARD pagelet to my home page. So this will be this is a one-time setup that you'll do uh, should, that you should add, that you should add to your home page of your of your uh, after your login screen so that you can see a list of all of the transactions that are available for you to reconcile. So from the top left hand corner you'll click on content and then you will see some the TGMP page list. So if you are a reconciler you will choose the P-card stage transactions because when the transactions come in on a nightly basis from, from Bank of America, um, they come in a status of stage. And your responsibility will be to reconcile those charges and change the status from stage to verified. So you're, you will not receive an automatic notification from the system that you have transactions to load. You'll be responsible for checking your home page and checking this page list to see if transactions have been loaded uh, for charges where you're the reconciler. So you select the page list, and you can click on the personalized layout. And then I typically like to add three columns and then take the P-card stage charges uh, page list and move it over to the far right-hand column. This way it comes up to the right of the news and announcements because uh, you're not allowed to, to move that uh, news and announcements uh, page list. And so once you've added the, the P-card stage charges pagelet into the right column, simply click Save. And that will bring you back to your home page. And if you scroll to the far right, you will then see the pagelet that's been added. So you'll notice I'm logged in as Joan Carroll, and I have three transactions that have, that have been loaded in um, that are ready for my, um, my reconciliation. Are there any questions about how to add the pagelet? Okay, we'll go on. So from the um, so from the home page, 
of the uh, Team Georgia Marketplace. I'll, you can click on e-procurement and then the procurement card center. So underneath this procurement card center, you can click on reconcile or go directly to your reconcile statement page. So if you are the reconciler for only one card, so maybe it's your own card or you just have one other card, when you click on that reconcile statement link, it automatically pulls you into the reconcile statement page. Um, some of you may be reconcilers for multiple cards. And if that is the case, then it actually takes you to a search page. Um, if you ever need to get back to that search page, you can click on the search link. It will ask you if you want to continue. You say yes. And you can use this reconcile search page to narrow down your list of transactions. So the, um, basically, you will have access from this search page to only see the employees that you have the ability to see their transactions or to reconcile or approve their transactions. So you can select their employee ID. A lot of times you'll also want to choose this card issue or a visa. And then if you want to narrow down the list of transactions uh, for, a, for a particular statement billing date, for example, we're going to work on the, the billing date, um, uh, or your current billing date is November the, excuse me, December 27th. So you would enter December 27th in this statement billing date. You can also narrow, narrow it down by chart the uh, transactions that you only uh, that are currently just in a stage status. So you'll notice if you have if you you're you're going to want to use this search page to narrow down your transactions, uh, especially for some of you that that reconcile for multiple cards, because. Um, the, the system will run faster for you if you narrow down the list of transactions. So if you've got, you know, like for example, I've got three charges here. Some of you may have over a hundred charges. Uh, when you're working on these transactions, it will speed the process if you narrow it down to um, either, uh, you know, one employee and then one employee by a certain status. The system will just run faster for you. Um, so I'm going to take um, on this on this page the first um, transaction that I'm going to reconcile is is the one to paper direct. So this would be a transaction, for example, where I went and made the purchase at the store. Um, it's not it's not a, a statewide contracted uh, vendor, so I didn't use the virtual catalogs to issue a requisition and then a purchase order to be created like we'll do for the Staples transaction. Uh, this would be considered like a point of sale or a face-to-face -face transaction. So, you'll, so if you take this transaction, um, I'm going to select it, and you'll notice different things about the transaction. It shows you the transaction date, the merchant. You'll notice that the status comes in in a stage status. If you want to view more information about that charge, you can click on the line details. Um, they, this particular merchant doesn't provide a lot of information, but you'll see on some of our, um, our merchants, they provide uh, line level information about what was actually purchased. Okay. Um, another option by clicking on that link is you can get this long transaction number. So if I wanted to take that, I can, right, I can double click it and right click it just basically to copy it. And then if I wanted to come back out to my search page, I can say continue and then I can enter just that transaction number, and that way I could work on just this one transaction, which again, the, the fewer number of transactions you have pulled up on this page, the faster the system's going to run for you. Underneath the uh, comments link, you'll notice that right now this comments uh, bubble is completely white. So if I click on that, this is where you will attach your, um, you will enter a comment and attach a copy of the scanned uh, scanned invoice. So I'm just going to put in some comments that, uh, and typically the, your comment that you will put in is uh, receipt attached. But of course you can add any other information about, about the transaction that you want in this comments field. So you enter the comment and then you click on the attach button and this is where you can browse and find a copy of the, of the receipt that you would have uh, scanned and saved to either the network or your hard drive. We recommend that you either scan your invoices in in a format of PDF or JPEG. Uh, please do not use TIFFs or, or bitmaps. Okay? Those have a lot of file size. 
are those take up a lot of file size. They're, they create a large file. And so uh, just to save the state on resources and, and space, uh, we recommend that you either scan your invoices in a PDF or a JPEG format. And typically there's an option on either your copier, uh, if you're using a copier to scan to change that format, or um, the, the scanning software that may be on your desktop if you have a desktop scanner on what the format needs to be. So you take a copy of the scanned invoice and you uh, click on open and then upload and it will copy, um, it, it will import in a copy of that, um, of that invoice into the system. So when you've completed your attachment, you'll click OK. And now you'll notice that this, uh, this transaction with the comment now has uh, lines in the comment field, which means that there's been a comment entered or there's been an attachment done. So the next part of responsibility for doing the reconciliation is to do the chart field coding for the transaction. So if you click on this distribution button, you'll see that these are your default chart fields that have come in um, for your um, for your um, your card, the card that's set up for you. So your P card administrator has set up a, a def default set of chart fields that come in on every transaction that you create, every transaction that's not related to a purchase order. And I'll explain how the how the distributions come in from a purchase order uh, in just a minute when I go through the uh, the next uh, quick reference guide. But you'll notice that the, the default account has come in, uh, the fund, the department, the fund source. So all of the required chart fields have come in. This is where you'll be expected to come in and actually change this account. Is This 626001 account is not a valid uh, budget account. It's not where your accounting department wants you to code transactions. Typically, you'll, you'll change the account to, to be either a 614 account or one of the other expense accounts. So supplies and materials, and this could be, for example, this 614003 because it's, uh, it's office supplies. So you'll be responsible for changing that account. And then, of course, if you need to char charge this, uh, this purchase to another department, you could change the purchase. If you needed to split it across departments, you could change the amount and then add a line. It's going to put this little blocker you just need to say to allow it. You add another row and you put in the number of rows. It'll copy the chart field uh, from line one down to line two and then you could change the department to a different department if this transaction was being uh, charged to multiple uh, distribution centers. So when I've completed splitting out the distributions on the or recoding and changing the default chart fields, that come in on the card, I click OK. You'll notice at this point that this redistrib uh, flag is now changed to yes. That just means that the transaction has been changed from the default transactions or default chart fields to the new chart fields that I've coded. So the next step that I want to take for this transaction is to run the, the validate budget process. So if, there's a couple of different ways to run this. Uh, the preferred method is to have the line selected that you want to run the validate budget on and you click the validate budget. So this process will run approximately um, um, 15 to 30 seconds per, uh, per transaction line. Um, so if it ever takes up to a minute, a minute and a half, we recommend that you uh, contact our help desk uh, and we can check and see if the system might be performing slow. Uh, this will be a test environment, so it, sometimes it can take a little longer to go. But you'll notice that while this is running, you have this processing um, um, image that comes up that shows you. So you should wait until this, uh, until this completes before you try to make any changes to the transaction. And so while that's running, have I got any questions on... on um, so someone asked the question, says, why is the select all checked? So the, that just shows you that if you want to select all, you can select all. So if I hit this clear off, I had a couple transactions that I wanted to run the validate budget process on at one time. So 
So let's say I had five point of sale transactions or face to face transactions up here. I could code all of them and then do a select all and then run a validate budget on all of those lines. Hopefully that answers your question. So the select all is not really checked. It's just when, it's just showing you that if you um, it's just part of the it's part of the image. Just like the clear all takes that off. So when you hit select all, it selects those lines. The other uh, way to run uh, the validate budget process is to click this run budget validation on save. Now keep in mind if you select that button and then you click save. It will run the validate budget process on all of the transactions that are on the page, not the ones you have selected. So if you've got 30 transactions pulled up and you code one and you click this run budget validation on save and then hit save, it will actually run budget checking on all 30 lines whether you intended for it to do that or not. So uh, it is an option to do that. Uh, we just recommend that we, we've had a couple users call in and say, my budget validation, I'm running it on one transaction. I've only got one line selected, but it's taking you know six minutes to run every time I click it. Well, we found out that they actually had this button checked, and they thought that it was only running um, budget validation on the lines that were selected when really it was running it on all of the transactions on the page. So just to, ch just to save you some time, we, we, we don't recommend uh, checking that box, but it would have been a customization to take it off. So we recommend you select the line and click the validate budget process. Are there any other questions on that? Okay. So you'll notice that as that process finished up, that the budget status went to valid. So once you've got your budget status to valid, you've, uh, or once you've you know, entered your comment, done your distribution and gotten the budget status to valid, you change the status of the transaction from stage to verify. And so then when you're done with that, you click on save. The transaction will save. And then if you went back to your home page and looked at your pagelet, if you the way to refresh your pagelet is this little arrow, you click refresh, and you'll notice that it takes that transaction off the pagelet because it's now no longer in a staged status. It's in a verified status, and your approvers will be able to, they'll have a pagelet that I'll show you in a minute that where that transaction is now on their pagelet and ready for them to, to, um, to approve. So are there any questions on um, how to reconcile a face-to-face uh, -face or a point-of-sale transaction? Okay. I don't have any questions coming up. So the next, um, the next quick reference guide that I want to walk through is one that is a little, um, it's a little more challenging the first time you go through it. It's probably the process that we get uh, the most questions about uh, for PCARD reconciliation, and that is uh, when you have made a a purchase uh, for a statewide contracted item. Uh, through Team Georgia Marketplace. So uh, whereas before you simply went out to Staples Link and placed your order uh, directly with Staples Link, um, we of course um, now require that purchases made through the statewide contracted or statewide contracted items through the virtual catalog that you do requisitions for those, and your central purchasing department actually issues POs uh, to place that order. Um, there's several reasons for that. Uh, you know, mainly the reason is that we're able to capture uh, at the line level um, what everyone is purchasing, that we're able to, to track prices specifically for items, and it gives uh, the state a better all view for the number of, uh, of things that are purchased. Um, so part of that is when purchase orders are, uh, are dispatched or sent to the merchant to place the order, um, a budget checking process has run on those POs, and part of that is that yeah, money is actually encumbered against the budget. So money is set aside for your order um, against the budget at the point when the purchase order is budget checked. So the only way to, um, to move that money from an encumbrance 
to an expenditure is to link that purchase order to the P card transaction when it comes in to the system. So part of your responsibility as a reconciler will be to link your P card transaction that comes in to the purchase order and the PO line that's in the system. So the encumbrance is down at the line level. So if you have a multi-line PO or you've ordered multiple things, the P card transaction must be split to match that charge. Well, this works well, uh, or the system will automatically split the P card transaction if the amount of the PO matches the, ma the amount of the P card transaction. But what we have found is some of our merchants um, are shipping from, um, from multiple locations, even though they're shipping on the same day. They ship from two different locations, and they actually charge your card per shipment instead of for the entire order. So when that transaction comes into the system, the system thinks that it's a partial, a partial order, or the, the transaction thinks it's a, it's a partial uh, shipment and it doesn't automatically link the transaction to the PO. So you, if you, if you uh, or place an order and the charge, uh, the charge is uh, for the full amount of the PO, the system will automatically take that transaction and split it out into the different PO lines for you. However, if they do a partial shipment or they charge you twice for the, if they charge you for one line of the PO and then a separate charge for the second line on the PO, the system will not automatically link that charge to the PO or the line number. So that's the process that I'm going to, going to show you today. Um, and you know, we expect that the first time you do this, you'll probably have some questions. Um, we'll recommend you come back and watch this uh, training material. Go through your quick reference guide. It does take uh, a few times to do that to get used to it. Um, you know, we've been live with Team Georgia Marketplace for over two years now. and. Um, you know, our, our reconcilers, it does take a while to learn how to do this. Our, you know, it takes, it takes a couple billing cycles to, to learn how to do this, but uh, if you use the quick reference guide, they'll walk you through how to do that. So the, um, the, the quick reference guide is called Link POs to, I'm sorry, it's the, um, the Link PO line to a P card transaction. And this is about, it's a five-step process to go through, okay? So one of the, the things that we built uh, to, to help you with, um, with knowing um, what purchase orders are out there, uh, of course, you could look in your managed requisition page and find your PO number. But we've built what's called a query. Uh, and I know some of you are new to PeopleSoft. A lot of you are new to PeopleSoft. But a query is basically a report or it's an online uh, report that you can run uh, to find your transactions. So this query is called 0PO204B. And so from the, so from when you're in PeopleSoft, you come underneath reporting tools and then query, query viewer. And then you click on, it will ask you for the query name. So if you do 204, and I'm just going to do a 204, and then um, because it says query name begins with 0PO204, and you click search, there's a couple different uh, queries that you can, you can run. This uh, 204C is the PCARD PO by user. So that's the one I'm going to run. B is by when you want to run it for a particular origin, uh, for a particular, uh, and the origin is that three-digit code that you were provided um, that tells you where your cards are listed. And then the 204C is for a particular reconciler. So I'm just going to run the 204C uh, just because it will run a little bit faster. And I can run that out to Excel. Oops, it kicked me out. I've got to make it so I can allow it.
So it's asking me for my user ID. So if I type in my user ID, this will show me a list of, and then I open up Excel, this will show me a list of all of the POs that have been issued against my card at the line level. So there's a couple different ways you can do this. So you can use this query to find out the list of your POs. For example, I've got a PO that was issued to Staples, PO number 124690, and it has two lines on it. I bought post-it notes and paper, and it gives me the amount for each line, 22640, and then the second line was 47940. So I can use this query to find all of those, but one thing you'll notice that when you start doing purchase orders to Staples, for example, they will give you in the, in the box, um, they will provide for you on the packing slip the PO number and everything that was on your order. And then they'll show you um, line one, line two, line three, and if line two wasn't shipped, it will show you quantity shipped was zero for line two, and then it'll show you the quantity that shipped for lines one and three, okay, if they were part of the thing. So you will have on your packing slip the PO number that they received and the line number that they, that they shipped uh, with that order. So that's probably the, the most helpful way uh, to know how you're going to split out your transaction, okay? So I'm going to come back into... Um, into the, rec, uh, the procurement card center. So go under e-procurement, procurement card center, and reconcile statement. You'll notice that the, that the verified transaction is still on my page. It comes up in my search results. I can get rid of that transaction or remove it from my page by coming back to the search page and saying that I only want to see transactions with a statement status of staged. So now the, the, the transaction that I want to, to reconcile is the Staples order. So Staples gives us a little more information than a lot of merchants uh, when they send uh, information. But part of it is I'll click back on this line detail. They provide line item detail. So they have a section seven where I can do view all. And you'll notice just with this one that they actually sent, uh, they sent some, the, the, an easel pad, and then also um, they included a catalog, which of course wasn't charged. I can click on the second tab and be able to see the quantity and the cost for that. Okay. So the first thing that I want to do with this transaction is before I split it out, is to add my attachment. So again, I'll click on the comments link. And then I will attach a copy of the scan invoice. I then will say OK. Now, for this transaction, the next step that I do is I, won't, I will not go and code the distributions for this transaction. Because there's a purchase order that's been issued for it, the first, the first step I need to take is I need to take this transaction, so the full amount of the transaction was 339.60, but I'm going to split it out into two different lines because I, we're going to, to demonstrate that two lines of my purchase order were, were, um, were shipped. So I'm going to take the transaction, click on the split line. The first line I'm going to say these were my, this was the post-it notes. And, the, and then I enter the amount that they billed me on the first line. So if I, I'll put in the 226.90. And then I'll add the second line. And then let's just say the, that the next, the next line was my paper that came in. And they charged 112.70 for that. I'll then say OK. And you'll notice that it now has taken the 339 charge and split it into the two amounts. I then, for line one, I click on the purchase details, and I link line one to the PO. And you'll, in this lookup for the PO, you will only see purchase orders that were against this particular card. 
So I'm going to pick the PO. And then it's real important, the next, line, next thing I do is I pick the line that it's against. And so that's all you have to complete on this page, and then you say OK. Now you'll notice that the budget status for that transaction has changed from valid. The reason that it's done that is because if I click on this distribution link, it has taken the chart fields or the, the chart field codes that were on the PO and copied those into the transaction. So, and, the, and they'll be grayed out. So you don't have to code the distributions on charges once they're linked to a PO. And then I just say OK. I'll then take the second line, come to the purchase details, pull up the PO, and then I'm going to link this against line two. Because it was the, it was, the packing slip said that they sent a partial shipment on line two. I didn't say OK. So that's all. So, and then when I'm done with those two transactions, you'll notice I don't have to run a validate budget on those transactions. I can select both of those two lines and change the status from stage to verified. I then just click Save. And again, if I come back to my home page, it's now taken off those T-card transactions off of my page list because they've now moved to a verified status and they're ready for the approver to approve this transaction. Are there any questions on, um, let's see, I've got a couple questions. And the question says, if the PO has every item listed individually, wouldn't it always link the transaction to the PO? You mentioned sometimes it doesn't automatically link to the PO. So it does not automatically link to the PO if they, if they, uh, if the amount of the transaction does not match the amount of the PO. So if they do one of two things, if they back order something, uh, one of the lines or, or even one quantity of, of one of the lines, then the transaction that they charge you wouldn't match the PO, so the system would not know how to match it up. Um, the other thing is we have found with Staples that they have different distribution centers and they'll actually they don't consider it a back order because they ship it all on the same day, but they send it from two different locations and they're charging the card um, based off of the, what, what they've shipped from that location. So those are ongoing um, conversations that we're having with Staples. Uh, one is for them to, to, uh, to work on uh, when they do that, to just charge the card one time instead of doing it um, multiple times and also uh, to reduce the, you know, to basically try to consolidate in their warehouses the things that we order so that they'll all ship from one location and come in one box. So uh, it's gotten a lot better. It, it, it could in, still improve, but it has gotten a lot better um, than when we first started. So hopefully that answered your question. But a, a lot of times, if they fully ship, you'll come into your reconcile page and you'll see that your transaction's already been split out, and that's that's the best because that way the only thing you've got to do is add your um, is add the scanned copy of your invoice to the first line, and then just set the status to verified. So uh, you know, uh, so you'll probably it'll it'll probably be about 50-50 at this point a lot when that happens, just depending on the number of. It just seems you know some of our orders we have going out are. Uh, you know, between 20 and 30 lines, and so then there's a higher percentage that there's going to be one of the one of the lines is going to be back ordered. But a lot of times, if the orders you know five or less lines, then they don't uh, they don't back order as often. All right, so that uh, I don't have any more questions that came through uh, for the reconciliation. So now I'm just going to show you uh, the role for an approver. So I'm going to sign out and log in as the approver. So the, the approver has a page lit as well. So this one time setup that the approver will do, you'll go under content, and then under the TGMP page lit, 
you'll choose the P-Card Ver Verified Charges pagelet. You'll select that pagelet, click on your personalized layout, and again, I like to use three columns. Take that pagelet and take it from the left column and use the arrows to move it over to the far right column. And then click Save. So in this pagelet, the approver will see all of the transactions that, um, that are sitting out there to be verified. So you'll see, for example, that uh, the, the Staples charge and the Paper Direct charge are both sitting out there in a verified status. And for the, um, on this pagelet, even though the transaction was split into two lines, um, it, it will come in as a, as a, at a summary level um, for the approver on the pagelet. And it'll, it will display whether or not that charge has been linked to a PO. So if I'm an approver for multiple cards, I will see more than just this one employee ID out there. So what I often, what I like to do is um, when I come to the e-procurement and the procurement card center and click on under reconcile, the reconcile statement link, because I'm an approver for multiple cardholders, the search page automatically comes up. If I do the lookup on the employee ID, I will only see the employees, so I should only see the, if I'm an approver for five cards, I'll only see uh, five employee IDs listed here. So you won't be able to see uh, cards that you're not an approver for. And I can enter their employee ID, narrow it down, and then I just want to see transactions that are already in a verified status. I'm sorry, I need to pick my card issue as Visa as well. So um, I only want to pick, if I pick staged, I would see transactions that have, are not ready for my approval yet. So I'll use the statement status to narrow it down to just verified charges and then click on search. And then that will bring back the, um, the, the charges that are out there for me to verify. So as an approver, you're, basi you're basically going back through to ensure that you know, they've entered their comments, you're viewing a copy of their, you could, if you want to see a copy of their invoice, you uh, need to hold down the control button and click on view and that will open up the, uh, the image. Okay. Um, other transactions, the, um, um, so once, you're, once you've gotten the, um, the transactions to a, um, a verified status, uh, basically your responsibility will be to do select all. And for some reason, my budget status went back to not checked. I'm going to go ahead and run the validate process on those. To make sure that those budget those go through the budget. So something to keep in mind is when this uh, the validate budget process is not uh, it's not expensing any funds. It's basically just making sure that the chart book combinations that were used on the transaction are a valid, uh, a valid budget string. So once the transactions are in a valid budget combination, if I want to um, set those transactions to approved, I can either use the drop down and change them to approved, or I can select them all and click the Approve button below. And then I simply just need to save. So that's the process for how an approver um, changes transactions from verified to approved. Are there any questions on doing uh, approval on PCARD transactions? All right. I um, also want to, I'm going to just show you real quick, uh, your transactions, just so uh, you have an understanding of your transactions that are, uh, we started low, uh, entering transactions or loading transactions for uh, GBI 
uh, starting on November the, the 28th, I believe, was the first file that came in. Um, so you should already have, if, if your card's basically been used uh, since Thanksgiving, then um, the, you probably have transactions that are out there waiting for your, um, your reconciliation and approval. So I'm going to log into the production system just so that you can see some of those transactions. Uh, this is how I go from the SAO uh, site. You should have received the link to production. So if you go ahead and add your pagelet uh, to production, you should see transactions that have already loaded. Um, another way to see a list of all transactions in the uh, in your agency is to use the, uh, to go back to the reporting tools query and the query viewer. And all of the PCARD queries start off with 0 PO2, 200. So or you can just type in 0 PO2 and you will see all of the public queries that are out there. Um, for example, this, 20, this 0 PO 200A is the query that's behind the page list. Um, but if you wanted to see um, the uh, zero PO 201B query, that's basically a list that you can run by your by your uh, origin, so that you can see all of the transactions that are uh, been loaded for your particular origin. So it will prompt you in this query for your business unit. So if you're not familiar, GBI's business unit is 47100. And the billing date from and to, a lot of people get this confused that it's, uh, it's like the transaction date or the posting date. That is your statement billing date. So GBI's statement billing date is the 27th of the month. Um, so your December 27th transactions are the ones that are loaded into the into uh, Team Georgia Marketplace right now. So, uh, and we use a range because uh, occasionally if your statement billing date falls on a Saturday or a Sunday, then they, um, they prior date those transactions and sometimes put them on uh, Friday, the Friday before. But uh, you'll get notification when that happens. But I'm going to run this from December 27th to December 27th. And you can, depending on, I can put in a percent which would show me all of the transactions uh, for the entire agency. Or if, if my agency, for example, is 119, I can just put in percent 119 um, percent and then click on view results. I'm not sure of all of your origins, uh, but um, you'll, you'll see if you run it for a percent, it's basically using the ship to field um, And so this is a list of all the transactions that are in there. Currently, 357 have been loaded. Um, shows you the amount of the transaction. It gives you the transaction number. You know, the current status is staged, of course. This is that transaction number that you can use to search for that one particular transaction. Um, gives you the merchant. This is the employee ID of the cardholder, their name, the last five digits of their card. And then these are the current um, distributions of the current chart fields that have come in on this transaction. So this is kind of the query that you can run. Um, and this is that, excuse me, this is that ship to field where all of the cards are linked. So I can use this Excel uh, page basically to filter by the ship to if I'm a reconciler basically for one origin. So what, and this shows you all staged transactions. It shows you all transactions for that statement billing date, and it's sorted by the employee ID or the status in the employee. So we have some transactions that have been verified and approved. A few have been done um, out, that are currently out there. Uh, shows you the budget status, so if it's gone through the validate budget yet. Um, one thing to keep in mind is some of the, again, this 626001 
is the default account, so it should be changed from the default account to the actual um, account for the transaction that needs to go in the transaction. And then it just basically shows us uh, who the who the reconciler is or who's the person who last touched that transaction. So, uh, are there any questions on uh, anything around the uh, the P card module? If you have um, if you have questions on doing your P card reconciliation, um, the, the the method is to contact uh, Pam or Rolanda for uh, for assistance with that. Uh, and then they uh, they have a daily call with us to answer any questions. So if they have um, questions on anything, um, they they either email us or bring it up in the uh, that's for the first two weeks of go live. We have a daily call. Where we talk about that. Um, so they are your uh, they're basically your super users for your P card reconciliation, um, and you can contact them with questions. Um, and if they can answer your question, then they will log a ticket with our help desk. Um, to get in touch with you to help you with um, with doing any of your P card reconciliation. So the easiest you know thing to do is to go ahead and you know jump in there and, and get started on your P card reconciliation and um, do a few transactions and um, and you'll get more familiar with it. So thank you for uh, for attending today. Again, we will. Uh, Uh, let's see, someone's asked their step-by-step -step instruction reconciliation. Yeah, those are the quick reference guides that I pointed out at the beginning of the webinar. So if you go back out to, um, we'll come back out and I'll show you how to find those from the DOAS home page. So if you're on DO, if you go to doas.ga.gov, click on the Team Georgia Marketplace. Then click on Learn More. You'll scroll down to the state and local entities. And underneath there you will see Team Georgia Marketplace Training Materials Quick Reference Guide. You click on that link. That launches the list of all of our quick reference guides, and underneath the P-Card section, there is the Reconcile P-Card Transaction Quick Reference Guide that you click on, which is the step-by-step, -step, and also the Link PO Line to a P-Card Transaction um, Quick Reference Guide as well. So those are the, the two ones that I went through today. Okay. The Approved P-Card Transaction uh, is the same as the Reconcile. Uh, you know, mo most of the steps in that process, the reconcilers should do, uh, but sometimes approvers uh, are doing the, some agencies are doing the reconciliation and the approval. But um, the, uh, so the approved guide is, is very similar. It's just the status change from, uh, is from uh, verified to approved instead of staged to verified. So those are the step-by-step -step guides. So we do recommend that you go and, and print those out so that you have um, have copies of those on your desktop. All right, well thank you for your time today and uh, and good luck with your P card reconciliation. Thank you.